Hello everyone, welcome back to Weaving Web 3. It's me, Stash, and I'm here with Francisco, the head lead of Request Network. So, uh, what is Request Network and why is it important and why do we need it? Of course. Hey everyone. Uh, so, Request Network, the, our vision, the vision of Request Network is to bring uh, the financial system on chain. We believe that the fin current financial system is very flawed and inefficient, and if we bring it on chain, we can make it way more efficient, more transparent, and also more inclusive. Uh, and our goal is to build the right tools to allow the inflow of companies from uh, Web 2 to Web 3 to take advantage of this new technology. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest problems we have. We were on a panel together. We were at ETH Bucharest. I forgot to mention that. But, oh, yeah. um, there are so many problems about like people getting into the finance and not understanding. And it's not just about payment systems, it's about uh, moving of information and then like ownership. And it's like, I feel like many people just are so like either blind to or they, they hate that word of crypto. And I think we were able to discuss how we need to like advance and adopt the next like, let's say billion users. And in, in your perspective, what would your ideal vision be for like request network to be in part of that adoption. Okay, so we we believe that um, um, people will adopt this this new technology specifically on the finance side because crypto payments are way more efficient than fiat payments. So you can make a crypto payment uh, go from one side of the world to another in like seconds and costing a few cents. And when you try the same in fiat, it will be up to a hundred dollars and maybe a week if it's from one part yeah. of the other to the other to another and uh, with this so companies are actually coming more into web3 and seeing those advantages like even traditional finance is seeing the advantages of making these crypto payments the problem is that you need to have some kind of track record for these payments right when you do a, a transaction with crypto you can go to Etherscan and read the transaction, but you can send that to your accountant, right? Yeah, absolutely. So at Request Network, we are building uh, a, a bunch of tools like payments and for invoicing um, to try to manage uh, this, this transition and make it easier for companies to come on board. So by, by creating receipts when you make a payment through Request Network, that traditional companies can then share with their accountants and uh, record everything in the in their books and be compliant yeah absolutely and i think we also like mentioned the, on the panel about settlements is the biggest problem right now like could you explain a bit more to people that may not know the, how our traditional financing system works and the, how that near instant finality of uh, payments yeah so when you're making a, a, a payment in fiat you're actually going through a bunch of intermediary banks uh, uh, it's not like a direct payment. It goes. It, it, it has like multiple payments inside of it, and that's the problem, right? That delays things, that costs things. Every every intermediary takes a fee, and that's 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 exactly what crypto is here to try to, yeah, to remove, like trust and intermediaries, like the base of why blockchain uh, and Bitcoin was invented. Um, and another great thing with the settlement in crypto that that we actually help with on request network is that you can settle you can make the payment on any currency and we can uh, for bookkeeping if you prefer we can s re record the the fiat uh, amount uh, that corresponds to that ethereum that you send and actually help you help settling crypto payments in fiat for for uh, bookkeeping that's amazing so your request network is heavily focusing on that financial side and i think it is um something i think many people don't understand is like oh the blockchain can be used for everything and i don't believe that there's going to be one chain that does everything and having that so specialized chain is the future like we have right now we have specific networks for finance and we have some arts and everything like that and i think that is a key part for not just to spread all your resources so thinly and focus on like the things that actually matter. Finance is like a multi-trillion dollar business and simplifying that on the blockchain is paramount for anyone. Like yeah, we will yeah. advance the future and uh, like people may not understand like in the UK, when you pay with a credit card, like let's say up to 5% will be gone. You pay someone 20 pounds, they'll only get 18, something like that. So with crypto, I could pay you the exact uh, 20 pounds for something and you will get 20 pounds it's not 
oh, you're going to get 18 pounds and you're making less money. So it is essentially freedom to the user and the yeah, I think it's it it, it it has the two advantages, right? Since you're removing you're you're removing the monopoly of credit cards, right? And you have different ways to pay, so the fees will probably go down even if because even if it's a crypto processor, they will have to take a fee if you go through a company yeah, absolutely. instead of going like uh, peer to peer. But it's it's going to be way less than a, a normal card will will charge. So at uh, the end of the day, everyone will be more and more wealthy and they keep their own hard-earned money. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And fascinating. Is there anything else that you want to get across to people from Request Network? Why, what, what it sets apart from uh, other people? I think that the, 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 the big difference of Request Network is, is that we, are, we have a very strong vision and we are here long term. Our, goals, our goal is very well defined. We want to move finance into the blockchain. and. The advantages that it can bring is more on the uh, it, the payment side is already happening. The invoicing and receipt yeah. side, we also start seeing that need already when the regulation is increasing. But in the future, it can be much more like uh, if you start getting, allowing people to own their own data on chain, yeah. their financial data on chain, you could have like decentralized credit scores and you could have like uh, automatic audits, automatic tax yeah. reporting, because everything is recorded on the blockchain. You can't really cook you have that instant the transactions, yeah, absolutely. yeah, right? So you have like an independent third party. It's like the beginning of the triple entry accounting. Uh, ah, that's crazy. So I, just going on say on credit, what, what is the importance of like a decentralized credit score? What would the, that enable people? So basically it would, it would enable people to that they have ownership of their data. They can choose who to share it with, and they can. It will allow like a very s smaller investors. Look, they they can decentralize the investment side because small investors will be able to access that mm -hmm. and will be able to provide uh, liquidity uh, more easily to small medium companies and yeah, stuff that's like right. that. I guess also like in that decentralized credit system you could potentially have like more that institutions like who want to borrow to let's say DeFi users they will be able to see okay this person has never been liquidated I am I am safe to say I would lend it to them right. Yeah and uh, besides being more efficient because it's, it's also calculated automatically yes. based on the transactions that you have on the network uh, so yeah. you don't have to actually have a gigantic data processor that goes and you have to send all your information, they need to read it. No, it's on chain, they, they can see it, everyone can see yeah. it. Efficiency. And, they, and, they, and they, they just do it and they know the data is reliable because the payments happened on chain and they are immutable, right? That's um, another thing that we are starting to see the need is the, uh, so we do uh, immutable invoices, right? So. And we start having clients that um, have a good history. We are a, a, a big, an old company, I would say, like since uh, you 2017. Guys are OGs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we start seeing that uh, the possibility of using an unpaid invoice, that it's going to be paid by a credible company. Yeah. Um, it can be used a bit like a financial asset, right? Because it is a, a future receivable. And one of the main reasons that small and, and medium companies go bust is because of liquidity problems. They yeah. have a bunch of, of mm -hmm. uh, uh, accounts receivables to, to receive, mm -hmm. but they don't receive it on time and they yeah. end up uh, closing. So allowing these kinds of use cases like these companies to go and uh, uh, factor their invoices to get er early liquidity mm -hmm. in a much easier way that they can't do in the, st in the financial institutions because financial institutions don't want to spend time taking a look at very small companies, right? Yeah, absolutely. They, they, so opening this up to smaller investors that do want to spend that time, it's, I think it's something that, that, uh, that uh, it will bring, yeah, yeah, bring a lot of value. It will bring a lot of value to the world. So Request Network is basically saving the ordinary person, the small investors, to potentially have the, the future that they deserve. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we, 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 we love the, that vision of trying to help like even smaller, bigger players and decentralize a little mm. bit the power that the, the big institutions have. That's amazing. Well, I think my, my brain is super excited with all this knowledge I've been given. And, um, I would just say thank you for coming on and I hope you have an amazing day. Oh yeah, it's much appreciated. Amazing.
Thanks a lot. <laughs>